Welcome back to Beauty Bee. When I learned that Pat McGrath was releasing a Star Wars makeup collaboration for uh, Rise of Skywalker, I was really excited. I think I've mentioned this in the past, but I absolutely love Star Wars. I mean, I am a big fan. I've seen uh, Rise of Skywalker probably like six times <laughs> since it came out on Disney Plus, at least maybe even more. And I've read dozens, maybe even approaching a hundred of the expanded universe novels. So I was excited. Um, I was also really nervous because I, I knew I couldn't afford it because I can't afford anything from Pat McGrath Labs and now Disney needs a cut. And I was a little nervous that I would somehow talk myself into purchasing a collection that I knew I should not just because of marketing and love of the franchise. I was also really hopeful that the fact that they were releasing a Star Wars collab with Pat McGrath would mean that they released another collection with a more affordably priced brand. For example, maybe Disney continuing its relationship with like ColourPop or Mac. That didn't happen. So I was disappointed, didn't get to buy anything. And honestly, that was probably a good thing. But it doesn't stop a girl from dreaming, right? So I've actually put together a Star Wars collection of makeup that I feel would be really cute. Unlike the Pat McGrath collection, which was just plagued with difficulties, um, the art was really uninspired. It looked, and I suspect it was, like Disney just provided them pictures and they stuck them on the packaging. Um, the biggest palette was just a re-promote that they'd, something they'd offered before. The, they, mixed up the release dates, which don't know how you manage that, but okay. And no one seemed to be able to get their hands on it. And as such, haven't heard a thing about it in months. <laughs> so now that that tea is extremely ice cold, let's talk about the co collection I've set up. Uh, I decided to go with the idea that it would be probably ColourPop putting out the collection. So I have three nine pan palettes because I wanted it to be reflective of all the films rather than just Rise of Skywalker. I decided to go with a droid theme. Uh, I made three, pa three nine pan palettes, one which is based off of each of the droids. So let's start with the R2-D2 palette. I'm gonna scooch a little to one side so we can put up a big picture. Now, for all of the droids, I wanted to largely stick to the color scheme that they have in canon. So with R2, I decided to go with a blue, and silver scheme with a little pop of red for this little uh, photoreceptor. So I got all of, I took all of these single shadow images from Sydney Grace. So with R2, I ended up sort of building out this silver and blue and red with some whites both a true matte white, an iridescent shimmery blue white color. To that, I also added a gradient so that you could make a really nice smoky eye. Not only does it have the silver, but it has a matte gray, a black, and a dark shimmering gray. So you could make a totally 
shimmery smoky eye or totally matte smoky eye. My idea for how people would use the red is similar to uh, what I'm wearing today. I don't know how well you can see it, but I have a burgundy cat eye on that I uh, did with just an angled brush and, and a dark red matte eyeshadow, pretty similar to what's in the palette here. You could also do a blue smoky eye, which I feel would be really pretty, though entirely outside of my comfort zone. The second palette is, of course, based on C3PO. Um, for this, I went with a fairly monochromatic yellow and gold palette. Um, we've got two pretty light yellow transition shades, or well, they'd be transition shades on me. I feel that the lighter of the two may be more appropriate as the brow bone or inner corner highlight on some people. And then we have several different takes on gold. We have like a very yellow metallic, what I would consider a true gold, a brownish gold, and a very dirty, warm gold. I think you could really create a variety of looks with this. I think it would be interesting to see sort of a uh, working in to out, going deeper and deeper gold as you get out. I also went with a truly neutral brown instead of a really warm brown to give you some added versatility. You could do a almost cool toned yellow look with this palette, which I think would be really interesting and not usually the way that we see yellows go, where they tend to lean almost orange instead. I really like this one. I think that if this was real, I'm pretty sure this is the one I would pick up. Third and final palette is based on BB-8. He's just adorable, so of course he needed a palette. Um, this one is, I think, a pretty interesting color scheme and not one that I've seen super often. This started as a more or less monochromatic orange palette with a little bit of sort of a warmer take on white with the uh, top middle shade and bottom left shade. However, to build it out, instead of going the yellowish or super, super neutral way that I see a lot of orange E palettes going, I went more red. I added this uh, very reddish orange shimmer shade that's in the bottom right and metallic red brown that's on the middle left feeling. You could definitely get a totally red look at this, but more importantly, you can also complement those orange colors with something a little bit more interesting than a yellow. Although if you bought two, which I'd like to think I wouldn't, but I uh, can't claim that much self-control. You could buy the C3PO and BB-8 palettes and really have a um, really nice library of warm toned, colorful, and neutral shades. So how would I package these? As you can probably tell, I've set up the uh, 3x3 9 pan palette ColourPop usual format. I have some mock-ups that I will put up here of what I think the these could look like in a palette. Hopefully, ColourPop would make these their cardboard packaging instead of their plastic packaging, but I really don't have a lot of faith in them. Um, what I would really love to see on the front are sort of cartoonish versions of the characters. Maybe really keep the uh, cardboard yellow and then draw on C-3PO's eyes and his face and a little bit of an outline of him 
and then do a similar thing for um, R2 and BB-8. So I feel this would be a really cute little collection. Somehow this is not the first time I have put together a Star Wars collection. I have done so previously on another channel that's actually totally um, Star Wars based. So I'll link that both up in the cards and below. And if you enjoy it, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. Let me know what intellectual property you would like to see in a makeup collection and let me know how you would make it come to life. Thanks for watching and until next time, may the force be with you. Bye!